the director of that center actually resigned or retired and left and it looked like that center may no longer operate and we requested out of the School of Education that we be allowed to host that center so we changed the name uh, to the Center for Innovative Leadership Development at that time. So we're in our fourth year uh, of operation, uh, operating at, as a hub within the School of Education and, and having folks coming from that particular hub and reach out in many different directions. Uh, Dr. John Balls has just completed his uh, doctoral studies with us and spent the last year here sort of a, an interim or, or part-time director that handling, setting up the conference and working with other projects. And this fall, John will continue that in a full-time position. And so we're now at, at the point that there is a, a contact for this center that's not necessarily like myself tied up in a lot of different directions so that we can, 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 can concentrate on initiatives that we see important. We've tried to focus on school and, and community outreach um, whenever possible, wherever possible. Um, uh, Dr. Balls now has a couple, have a couple of proposals out on the table with different organizations so we're constantly looking at and chances to become involved with school and communities. As I said before, we've been working with communities and schools for, uh, I should always know these exact years, we've been at least 10. I've been here 12 years and we started working with them, I think, really early on. Uh, so we, that has been a big outreach for us. We worked through the School of Education and the Center with the uh, Wheat and Seed Project in Northeast Shelby. That was about a five year Extend. That's how we got our develop our uh, relationship with Shelby Police Department. We did some work with juvenile justice in the area of gang uh, pro, uh, gang problems and programs to address gang issues. And currently, uh, just completed a leadership training with the Shelby Police Department. We have a short uh, documentary to share with you at the end of this presentation. We want to continue to do this, not just, we, we're very proud of what we do with educators and, and our undergraduate program preparing teachers. Uh, we're very proud of what our master's program has done. We're very proud of what our uh, advanced program and, and our doctorate work has done. But we want to be more than that. We want to be like we've done with these other groups to reach out and then those all work together in terms of the value of learning and the value of teaching and what it means uh, to those that, that, that we are able to influence, we're able to work with. We come away from these things with, with a lot more knowledge than we had before, and that experience is valuable to us. We're charged by accreditation agencies to do those kind of things. We're charged by the Department of Public Instruction to reach out to the community. And our Center of Innovative Leadership Development, especially working with God Hall School of Business, has enabled us to do that. We want you to go away and tell others that there's a place, there's a, there's a group at Gardner Web that's interested in you as a community person, not just as a, someone in business or not just someone in, in education. Uh, as a hub of the School of Education, is our intent that we focus on the research and the development that's there so that we become uh, a resource for those people or organizations looking for some answers. Obviously, you see a natural fit between doctoral level uh, dissertation research work and, and housing that information uh, and working through the School of Business and some of the projects that, that those students have become part of what we house and help others. So that we want people to, in, around the country to say, I've got a, this organization needs some help. Gardner Webb University over there has, has something that might, we might need to look at because they've had that experience. So as the hub, we're not just sitting there operating, we're actually collecting and developing, and we think that's valuable. You know how valuable research is, how valuable it is to understand what works, what doesn't work, why that may occur. So as the hub, we have that, and, and as we expand that, we need you to contribute to that. Uh, and our collaborative with God Ball School of Business, we continue to look at those uh, opportunities I'm going to mention a little bit later. We, we've 
have a proposal on the table now. We hope that by next fall it starts called a doctorate organizational leadership. That, that will be an, an integrated cross curricular program. We're very dependent upon the school of business to help us with that. We're also looking at psychology and some other areas across campus, but that doctor organizational leadership will uh, assist those people in uh, the medical field, business field. Uh, we even had a couple interest points from chiefs of police and, and those in law enforcement. So that is beyond the realm of of education and preparing teachers and, and leaders in schools, that hub is reaching out to help prepare prepare people to help organizations. Our mission is to I'll skip through the to the best part to the most important part is developing skills of local leaders with proven methods and focus on transforming essential community functions. That's what I just said in the last few minutes is that we we're reaching out beyond uh, our comfort zone a little bit, reaching out beyond what is our normal uh, area of operation to those trying to help learn about, help contribute to the development of those leaders who make an impact in the communities and the societies that we live in. And I think we have an obligation to that, especially uh, as Gardner Webb uh, has as its foundation that, that, that belief that faith initiative that, that we have a responsibility to do that. Um, if we can can expand that opportunity, then we become better at what we do. And I think that that's beneficial for us to continue to learn. We we can stay in our operational mode as is and preparing teachers or preparing leaders and we and be good at that, but we'll even get better. We, we've got a session on efficacy that here and as part of day added experiences as we learn uh, about ourselves and learn about what it takes for an organization to develop we learn about how to help schools or whatever specific area we might want to deal with improving the results and quality of life that, that, that communities enjoy there's no better uh, reward than going into a community and, and, and meeting people and knowing people and working with people. I was in Lowe's this past weekend, um, no, past week, I was gone for the weekend, was in Lowe's picking up something very simple and had three people walked up and shake my hand and said, good to see you again. People that I wouldn't have known had we not been involved with a weed seed initiative and not been involved with the Shelby Police Department uh, because in, in some way, not because we are that good or that contributed to what happened, but we're part of that relationship that allows that organization to do some things that's impacting the lives of those people. Uh, I always remember our, our, our doctoral students collect data for different projects we were doing. We can see uh, evaluation providing data back to the, to the board that managed the WEDC project. We went out on a Saturday morning and took our doctoral students and went door to door and just interview people about what was taking place in their community. Uh, and I don't think there was anybody from Cleveland County in that particular cohort of students, everyone from surrounding areas, South Carolina, Clover West, and, and wherever it may be. So they're very unfamiliar with, with the show in Cleveland County, and they were apprehensive about going Saturday morning and knocking on the door and saying, can I ask you a few questions? Uh, the value that was when we came back, instead of saying, I, I hope we don't ever do that again, I said, when can we go back? When can we go back? I want to do that again. That the relationships that were built uh, were not just phenomenal in terms of caring and, and getting to know a little bit about it. We had people who continued in that project beyond their requirement as, as part of that particular cohort because they had such a, a vested kind of interest in that. So that's our mission. Is, is that the center becomes part of who helps those communities grow and develop. Uh, we want creative efforts, which ties into our, our speaker this morning. We want ways to uh, to become innovative in what we do in terms of helping us in the communities. And when we started working with the Shelby Police Department, it's probably one of the most apprehensive things I've done in uh, 
uh, I've been teaching 45 years, and, but there was, a, there was some apprehension about how will I be seen by this group of law enforcement people who put their lives uh, on the line for me every day that they go to work since I live in this community. And here's a, a teacher coming to tell us, talk to us about leadership in that area. So it, we had to be creative in our uh, how we address that or we're going to lose uh, a valuable audience. Uh, and that, it, that creativity was basically listening and, and understanding and, and talking and communicating. We'll see some of that in our documentary. Uh, we have a lot of leaders in a lot of different areas that I think benefit from the conversation, not benefit from the fact that we know how to do that, but benefit from, from what we feel like the center's ability to, to carry on a, a conversation about what leadership really means. What we are trying to establish, and I keep referring to the police department because that's our most one of our proudest moments is that we weren't talking about the chief and the chief sitting in the back room. We weren't talking about improving the chief. We were talking about improving every leadership of everyone in that organization. Uh, if you come to my session this, uh, later today on excellence, we're going to talk about that concept that it's for us to be excellent and sustain that level of, of performance and all of us have to take some responsibilities and leadership roles. Uh, so it's when we say Center for Innovative Leadership Development, we're talking about everybody in the organization, not just the top brass or top position. What do we want? We want to engage community leaders, investigate strengths and opportunities, build partnerships, and establish a shared strategy for enhancing, enhancing capacity of local leaders throughout the region. So that's all summarized what I've been trying to talk about. Professional, personal and career development services to local leaders. Local projects that demonstrate how individuals or school agencies are program based and community leadership strategies. Evaluate the results and replicate leadership development process to make what is being learned in the demonstration efforts accessible to more communities. We just spent some time uh, meeting with uh, a committee out of Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and looking at what could be done by, by higher ed agencies to contribute to the overall development of that school community. Uh, and we're in line now to do some of the things to help with these desired outcomes. Some simple things like give an opportunity for Charlotte Mecklenburg students, uh, middle, especially middle grade students, to come to Garden Web and tour our campus. Uh, it's probably very rare that, that young people out of Charlotte Mecklenburg ever get to a little community that only has one stoplight. So it is a, a, an experience. You think, well, coming to Boyle Springs, what does that do for a middle grade student? Well, the student who's never seen anything but hustle and bustle gets an opportunity to see a different way, a rural way of life, and so they're excited about that possibility being here. And we're in line to, to help do some, some leadership development with some key people in that position. So, our outcomes are, are reached when we reach out and continue to find ways to, to be a part of what those communities are. You're going to hear uh, in this conference a lot about capacity and effectiveness um, and being driven by a leader's self-efficacy and level of collective efficacy. You may hear more of that than you want to hear. I know our doctor students and our master's level students have, have uh, been subject to a book called um, uh, Rethink, Rebound, Rebuild. And in that, there's a, an emphasis on a value-added model that talks specifically about uh, providing self-efficacy opportunities and, and leading to a level of collective efficacy. And I don't want to take away from any other presentations today. Uh, in theory, we're a little troubled by the fact that, that we're being measured by uh, profits, or being measured by in school business grades, uh, and being compared based on how much profit we make and how, much, uh, how better we get in terms of our, our grades. That concerns us deeply because one thing is not true true measure of what 
growth of their organization is really about. And secondly, it's very difficult to sustain that, to, to continue to get more profits and more profits, and I'm using that from the, from the business standpoint to tie it in, or to continue to get higher grades, higher grades, higher grades, it leads to a lot of burnout and, and a lot of discontent. Our theory within that text is that if we as individuals become better at what we do, and we need collectively look at the group, then that organization will get better at profits and the scores will take care of themselves. And we can sustain that as we continue to build that level of ability. So the key principle within the Center of Innovative Leadership is that each one of you, each one of us, have to get better at what we do. Every day, we have to do a little better than we did yesterday. There's a lot involved in that, obviously, it's in terms of reflection and, and goal planning and goal setting. We want to be out front and, and as the center in helping people understand that concept. It's important for you as leaders to know that in terms of that's the best way to build and sustain growth over a short period of time, which can be sustained over a longer period of time. Leadership extends beyond individuals' titles or roles to everyone in the organization. If that's the self-evidence piece, if every individual in your school, your business, your church, your civic group, your hospital, your police department, every individual in that organization gets better at what they do, then collectively that organization will grow. And those things that we're held accountable for will start to show up and be able to sustain that. An empowered environment and culture it is vital in the, to developing leadership skills and transforming communities. Uh, I've said this a, a, at least a thousand times. Empowerment is an attitude, not a process. And we don't really understand that in organizations. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the business world as I am in the education world, but we tend to think we'll empower people, turn them loose and set them free, and let them vote and move forward. Empowerment is what you think about yourself in terms of, am, am I going to do what it takes to get better every day without someone having to tell me to do that? So part of what we want to promote in this center is that it's you lead that whole process of empowerment, not the person who's in charge and gives you some flexibility. Communities must sustain, uh, sustain intentional transformation efforts if long-term cultural changes can be achieved. We're going to talk about it in my session later this morning about what it means to sustain those particular efforts. Community transformation must be supported with sufficient organizational, with intellectual, social, and human capital. Uh, that has been demonstrated as necessary to initiate and sustain efforts required for complex change. So we build our ability to think and problem solve and learn we build our ability to have strong relationships and we build that human capital, which is that level of self-efficacy that we have better skills than we had yesterday. What do we do in this center? We do regional conferences uh, upon request and we're all constantly out searching for some of those opportunities. We have leadership development activities. Some of that's done face-to-face, -face, a lot of that's done face-to-face. -face. We do have webinars and things that we send links out where people can view what we do, or what we're promoting. Community transformation projects, evaluation research, documenting transformational leadership, public awareness campaign for promoting works to build leaders and transform communities. Our evaluation research, we uh, there's an article we draft now going into a, a national police magazine to talk about our project with the Shelby Police Department. So that's part of that evaluation research that helps someone understand transformation. What is the future of the Center for Innovative Leadership? And I know the future for the Godwell School of Business is very bright. Uh, the minds there and the thinking and the young people and, and the, the persons involved in those programs are, are just exceptional. For, for the CILD, we need more involvement. It needs to be more than a two-man operation and, and, and while we're reaching out and building collaboration and partnerships, we still need more of you. We need you to come back and be a part of this. Uh, we need endowments. We, if, you, if there's opportunities for money there that would help fund some activities, obviously resources is a key piece. 
uh, expanded staffing, uh, you could be part of that. Our full-time staff will be part of that. Our adjuncts will be part of that. We'll continue to look at the special projects. We're building that ability to be hub, be the hub of the School of Education. The new part is we're looking for creating a center for early learning. Uh, that's in the draft stages now, but hopefully by this time next year we have some news there. We're looking, we know the value of preschool, pre-kindergarten, we know the value of, of birth to kindergarten. Uh, that would require us as a school of education to look at some different credentials. It would require us to look at different curriculums. It would require us to to think differently about that preparation. I mentioned briefly the, the doctorate organizational leadership. Uh, we, we're ready to move forward with, through the approval of uh, persons on campus, so, and then we'll be into that early fall. Uh, hopefully that can kick off by next year. I think we had, we sent out an electronic uh, interest survey on that, had a, about almost 90 responses with close to 50 phone numbers and contacts, so we've got a lot of interest there. Uh, that's going to open us up to, to a lot of a lot more opportunities for, for both schools, um, school of business and school of education, to be recognized in uh, areas that we typically have not been a part of, and really uh, growing out of, say, Cleveland County into some more regional areas. So we've got interest from all over North Carolina and South Carolina. We sent our electronic link to every community college in both states and got a lot of some response from that too. Where do you fit? Uh, I need you to walk away from here saying I'm part of the Center for Innovative Leadership Development, whether with communities and schools or from God Hall School of Business or from education or whatever. You are part of this center uh, and that you think that in that way that this is mine, I need to use it, and I can contribute, I can continue to help it grow and develop. So that way you get involved. If there's, if there's a, a contact, if there's an idea, if there's a project, then come to us and let us be, let us be a part of that. Then continue to contribute to the research and learning. If there's something you want to know about, let us come in and help collect the information or data to, make, to, to determine if that is valuable. If there's something that you can offer to that research and learning, certainly you can, you can do that if you are doing that, and even in the courses you take here. But most of all, be a spokesperson for what I've tried to relay to you. Maybe we haven't done a very good job of getting that information out, uh, but I think it's important that, that communities do understand that. Now, this is about a seven minute video, um, a documentary, sort of talking about our project. Uh, then we'll open up for questions. Uh, we do have three members from Shelby Police Department here. I, I think this and this was a collaborative effort with Godball School of Business as well. And I think this sort of typifies what I've been trying to say to you in terms of expanding our boundaries of what we're capable of doing, over what we possibly can do. So uh, sit back and enjoy this. Collaboration, the act of working with someone to produce or create something, to work jointly with others or together, especially in an intellectual endeavor, to cooperate. For officers of the Shelby Police Department, the concept of collaboration is familiar. SPD implements a community-oriented policing model in which they work hand-in-hand -hand with citizens of Shelby, North Carolina in an effort to proactively address the immediate conditions that give rise to public safety issues, including crime, social disorder, and fear of crime. But members of the force stepped decidedly outside of their comfort zone during much of the 2012 calendar year as they partnered with the Gardner-Webb University Center for Innovative Leadership Development to undergo extensive and customized leadership training. Dr. Doug Urey is the Dean of the School of Education and he serves as the Director for the Center for Innovative Leadership Development. We started from day one with the Shelby Police Department talking about what it meant for each individual to get better at what they do 
so that collectively the organization could possibly be as great as possible. As part of a comprehensive program designed for supervisors and leaders within the Shelby Police Force, participants traveled monthly to the university where they spent a day in interactive discussions on a variety of topics relevant to a wide range of organizations, yet still specific to the daily functions, duties, and challenges of the officers. Shelby Police Chief Jeff Ledford initially established the vision for the customized leadership training out of a desire to build upon the good that was already within the department. We were looking, as any organization does, is, is how do you grow and, and how do you get better not only as an organization, but how do you get better at serving the community? We don't want to just deal with status quo. We don't want to be just a run-of-the-mill group. We want it to be the best we could be for the citizens of Shelby. And so that's what started. It wasn't anything bad. It wasn't anything wrong. We just wanted to get better. I don't think a meeting went by that we didn't reinforce the concept, you are a good group. The numbers show that, the attitudes show that, the perception of the community demonstrates that. So all the pieces were in place, but there is always an opportunity to transform that into something that's even better. And they got to want to do that. If they don't want to do that, then they're probably going to stay pretty close to where they are. Along with Yuri, CILD Assistant Director John Balls was instrumental in the facilitation of the monthly training sessions. He believes one of the most critical elements factoring into the success of the Academy was the bond and rapport which quickly developed between the officers and the facilitators. You're not going to change anyone's attitude uh, until they trust. Trust that they, that they believe that you have their interest at heart. Uh, and so it starts with that and you've got, as a leader, you've got to walk the talk on that. Uh, you've got to set the example. You've got to be the role model for that. Almost immediately, Yuri and Balls witnessed a new level of excitement amongst the participants. Lieutenant Shannon Price was impressed that the officer's feedback was almost immediately implemented into the curriculum they were discussing. The fortunate part is that Dr. Yuri took the information that we presented him and he built upon it. And, and he let us know what we needed to do to grow from it. Ball said the sessions were structured in a way to offer the men and women of the force an opportunity to explore thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and attitudes in a safe place where there was room to make mistakes without compromising the mission of the department or the safety of the community. You've got to give them the latitude. You, people are not going to grow if they're on a short leash. So we can afford some mistakes, but let's make sure the mistakes are on low profile kinds of things. Captains Lisa Green and Rick Stafford said the entire experience was eye-opening. Neither of them realized the extent to which the divisions of the department had been operating as separate entities instead of in the framework of a unified team. Traditionally we're, we're broken up as a department into you know patrol division, uh, criminal investigative division, vice division and you know we all work at, and do a great job at, at doing our respective duties, but they definitely overlap. We're all police officers and th I think this is just a reminder to get back to we all have one mission, one focus, one goal, and that is to make the citizens of, of Shelby and Cleveland County safe. Now you're starting to see everybody pull together and everybody realize that it's about us. Mm -hmm. It's not about me or you, it's about us. And this department is about us. And this department is about the community. You know, and, and that's, the, that's the biggest accomplishment I'm, I have seen is not about me, but what I'm seeing take place with me and with my fellow officers. As a part of this entire process, they redeveloped our mission statement. So now every leader within the organization has ownership in the mission of where we're going. It's not my mission. I didn't write it as a chief of police. I didn't come in and say, this is what you're going to do. It's theirs. Yuri admitted that in the beginning he was nervous about the leadership training, even after agreeing to develop and present a customized program for leadership growth within the city of Shelby Police Department. My apprehension was can we get to that point? And it, it didn't take long to feel really good about that in terms of, you know, you can see it in someone's eyes if they're at least accepting it. They don't have to believe it, but they accept it. And I grew from it. We grew from it uh, in what we learned from them. And the next time we do it, I think we'll be even better at it. Overall, Chief Jeff Ledford could not be happier at the new direction and excitement he has witnessed within the force. 
He's already planning for a second group of supervisors, officers, and support staff to undergo specific training sessions, and he desires to continue to utilize the expertise available through the Gardner Webb Center for Innovative Leadership Development. This academy was about people, it was about communication, it was about diversity, it was about leadership, it was about you know how you you collaborate with the community. Obviously the customer, the citizen's going to see a better outcome, I believe. Our department's going to be more efficient because of it, but we focused on who they were and not what they were. And, and I think that's where our payoff will be.
Thank you very much.